to today's service. Uh, can you hear me okay? Mic's on a little bit higher, John. A little bit more volume. Your girl's taking care of that for me. Thank you, Elise. Love the ladies working in the sound booth. Autumn and Elise, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm sure Janiah's, there she is, popped up. We need some stools so we can see them all back there. They do such a good job. Let's give them a hand. Yeah, there, their head just went. So, but that's people work in the church. It's an important part, making them feel they are. Um, like, you know, Jesus said, let the little children come unto me. They're not little, but, you know, we'll take them all, no matter what your age. You might be 90-year-old and we'll still take you. So you're young, young in heart. That's all that matters. Uh, if you will, look at your bulletin. Uh, we'll go through this real quick. You'll see the flyer for the uh, trunk or treat. Uh, we have, a, uh, again, a basket in the back for donations if you care to take advantage of that. And all those, uh, you know, this will help the Waynesville, New Hampshire churches and uh, for the Waynesville Goshen release time, the education, or the bus over here on the church property that sits next to the school. Uh, Pastor Don always participated in the trunk or treat. And like we said last week, uh, he always provided the uh, hot chocolate and the juice boxes, and I think uh, we're going to do that again. Um, <clears throat> it's another one of those things that we're finding out about Pastor Don. He did behind the scenes. Um, you know, it's kind of been up on a year now, and when every every time we come to some new uh, fork in the road, we found out you know just what he did for us and for the community. And uh, he was such a blessing to everybody. And. Uh, um, We've been talking to pastoral candidates, and we tell them that. Uh, we said we had a pastor that was the, the community pastor. Of course, he was here long enough uh, to know everybody. <clears throat> you know, he come and went. Excuse me. But uh, we're making sure they understand that. So whoever's called to this pastor is going to be the same type of person. Uh, but, you know, please make yourself available to that. And if you, you know, care to participate, if you live outside of town, if you don't have children uh, coming in to uh, trick-or-treat on Thursday night, uh, go down and, and see the trunk-or-treat. It, it's a pretty interesting time. They decorate their cars, and, and uh, the kids come down and have a good time. And uh, so uh, be available for that. And you'll see our regular order of worship today. Uh, we're in a 1030 service, obviously. Monday, you'll see quilting in the fellowship hall. Uh, Tuesday, Waynesville Senior Citizens will be having their birthday lunch at the uh, Salty Longhorn in uh, Roundhead. And I believe that's connected to the Salty Heifer here in Waynesville. I think it's the same people. Um, I've been hearing good things about their food, uh, so I haven't been there yet. Uh, but we'll try that out one of these days. Uh, you'll see the Wednesday uh, children and youth line up. Uh, that's always an important part to, to uh, educate our kids in, in the way of the church. and. Uh, to learn about the Bible and God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And I know we have some good folks taking care of that. So uh, if you can come out on some Wednesday night, it's a, it's a blessing to see them in action. They have such a good time. And like Linda always likes to say, uh, you know, we have kids that come out on Wednesday night that probably never see the inside of a church any other time. So that's it's important. We're reaching kids. You know, you reach them at an early age and, you know, raise up a child in the way he should go. And, you know, when he's old, he won't depart from it. So. That's what we're all about here at the Waynesville Baptist Church. And um, you'll see the shoebox for the Samaritan's Purse, uh, the tables out there. Andrea Turner's kind of heading that up for us this year. Her goal is 30 boxes. Uh, we'd like to help her reach that goal. I know there's, uh, I don't know how many slips are left out there, but uh, she wants to have those in here by the 13th, and then she's going to collect those and take them to the distribution point for us. Uh, so if you can help out, I know a lot of people will take a boy and a girl and do one of each and uh, try to think uh, I think I think Jerry asked me if they had Bible did you ask me that Jerry if they put Bibles in them somebody did might have been Sharon somebody asked me if they if they could put a Bible in the box and but if you watch the video they actually get a Bible after they go through their little 12-step program uh, they do some education with them and then uh, they're presented a Bible in their own language so you don't have to go that far, but, you know, they like everything else that uh, they suggest that you give to them. And they're so appreciative. They don't have much, but uh, you can see their faces light up. And then uh, when they learn about Jesus, uh, they have even more to uh, glow about. And then you'll see Pat Moyer's uh, new address. Uh, 
We want to have a card shower for and lift her spirits. I know, I think he has COVID. Is that correct, Beth? Yes. Um, so, yeah, she's ill, but she's doing okay. Um, but yeah, she's down there. I think uh, her son Terry and his wife live in that same complex down there. So I think that's why she's there. They can keep an eye on her and help her out. Uh, but yeah, let's send her cards, wish her well, uh, to get better and uh, just to lift her spirits and let her know that we're thinking about her. And then you'll see the birthday people, uh, see those good people, wish them well on their special day. Um, want to remember a classmate of mine, uh, Brenda Motter, passed away, uh, Brenda Motter Stalker. Um, I got to looking at my uh, uh, classmate uh, roster and I've lost nine people out of my class, out of 35, that's quite a bit. Um, but yeah, she lost her husband earlier this year. So um, she had cancer and uh, she didn't last very long. But we know she's in a better place. Uh, she is with her husband, Kenny. And I know she's with Pastor Don, and they used to gather together in Bill uh, Motter's garage and do karaoke, and I'm sure they're doing that right now. So having a good time, uh, praising the Lord, you know, reading words off the screen and singing in the microphone, and they didn't, they loved nothing better than to do that. So remember the Motter Stalker family. Uh, they have two boys, and of course they lost both parents in the same year, so that's gotta be tough. So we just uh, lift them up in prayer. Anybody have a prayer request or a praise they'd like to mention at this time? Yes.
Thank you, Dave. Dave will pray for you in just a little bit, but I wouldn't ask anybody else if they have a praise or a prayer request. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Well, let's just go to the Lord in prayer right now. Father God, we come to you as, as humble servants, um, knowing that your will is perfect and that uh, you have only our best interest at heart. And Father, we, uh, we praise you for Maxine's uh, good news. Um, Father, it's always uh, worrisome to think something's wrong, but then it's also wonderful to find out that it's easily taken care of. So we thank you for modern medicine. We thank you for caring our medical personnel and uh, Father, we pray for Dee right now. Um, you've heard her testimony, and uh, there's nothing we can add to that except that uh, we pray your perfect will be done in her life. Uh, she's looking for a miracle, and, um, and that's what we're asking for, too. And Father, you are a good and gracious God, and we know that you love us. And Father, she's trusting in you. And uh, Father, I just want you to search the hearts of the people that maybe not have spoken up, uh, that there's something that, uh, that's a concern on their heart, and Father, you know that before we even ask, so we lift those up as well. And we just give you thanks and praise for all things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, if you will, uh, please take your hymnal and uh, turn to number 428, stand, and we'll sing uh, In the Garden. We'll sing all three verses, please. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there another has ever known and the sound of his voice so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we 
we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. Would you bow in prayer? Father God, as part of our worship, we come before you now to give back. Father, you're a good and gracious God, and you see our needs, and you bless us abundantly, and we thank you for that. So, Father, help us now to be good stewards and to give back a portion, that this church would grow, that this ministry would continue, and that others would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you for the gift and the giver, and it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. We thanked our sound crew. I want to thank our ushers today, too. They do a fantastic job. Thank you, fellas. I know whenever the church doors open, Troy's here, and uh, thank the Waitman men for uh, helping as well. Uh, you know, we've got a good group of men in this church. Uh, like Pastor Don always said, there's a lot of congregations that are jealous of the men that we have. Uh, not the particular men that we have, but the fact that we have men coming here to worship. And that is a wonderful thing. I know when Beth and I first started many years ago, coming here to church, um, boy, there were like three or four of us and out of about 30 people that were attending. So it's good to see this church grow and to see the number of men. So men, pat yourself on the back. And uh, you women that are sitting beside them, give them a hug and say thanks for coming to church with me. So that's important. Uh, you know, the women come and the kids come, but it's nice to see the men, so thank you. Um, before we sing our next song, uh, Maxine, we're going to give you a break again. We're going to sing on the screen. Um, we listened to you when we were doing our pulpit committee uh, preview. Uh, a lot of people said we'd like to see some contemporary music, and uh, I will let you know that the, the people that we've interviewed are fully on board with that. In fact, a lot of them are, um, attend church now that have what they call blended services where they sing the old and the new. So that will continue with whoever is called. Um, I still like the hymn, like I told the people in the early service. I'm 68 years old and I've always sung from the hymn book and I don't want to ever get away from that, but I do like some of the new choruses. Um, I don't like the one, now this one kind of repeats itself, but it's short. I don't like the ones that go on and on and on and on and on. So. I think you kind of lose sight after about the three, first three times. But uh, if you will, stand and look to the screen and sing uh, as unto the Lord. Pillars 
today. I sure like when you're here, Troy. I, I appreciate you coming to church. Thank you so much. <laughs> Beth and I had the privilege of uh, going out with my brother and his wife last night. Uh, went to a little venue in Lima. Really didn't know what to expect, uh, but there was a uh, a band playing, a three-piece band, uh, guitar, lead guitar, bass guitar, drummer. Uh, he played some acoustical music and uh, it was an outdoor venue and it was a perfect night for it. We had a really nice time. Uh, uh, my brother lives in Lyme, I don't see him all that much, but we communicate once in a while, but they called us and said, would you like to go? And we said, sure. Had never heard of the group, um, but boy, we had a blast. Josh, you would have rocked out all night with him. He was. He was playing some stuff, and uh, uh, I'm an old timer. I can remember Joe Walsh and the James Gang, and they played one of their songs, and I was singing along with them, so probably looked like an old fool, but I didn't care. We were having a good time. Uh, it was a nice place. Uh, we didn't feel like we were going to be assaulted or threatened at any time. It was an older group, and we were all having fun. It was just a good time, and uh, we certainly appreciate that. Uh, and I know we're going to talk about music here in a little bit when I talk about John, because I'm going to talk about John and all the pulpit committee. Uh, but music, and we've been asking our candidates how important music is in the worship service. And we know it's important here. Uh, in fact, we had one gentleman say, uh, music takes you places that the spoken word can't. And I believe that. Uh, because the music last night, it took, me, it took me to places I hadn't been for a while, and I have really enjoyed it. And they were good places, don't get me wrong, it was, it was fun. Uh, kind of took me back to my, my younger days and uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. We had a good time, um, enjoyable evening. Uh, I always feel sorry for Beth. Um, she's on a new diet and she's doing well. But I was hungry and uh, the people that sat with us... <laughs> and she's feeding me, don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> she... Uh, the, the food that she's making for herself is fantastic, so I'm eating healthy too. But I had to have some food, and the people that sat with us, there were two of them, but they ordered three plates of food. And if I had known that, I wouldn't have had to order any, but yeah, I ate in front of her, and I feel bad, so forgive me, Beth, so yeah. 
but she's doing well. She's taller. I'm, I'm, I'm her biggest cheerleader, so. Uh, but that's, I, I joke, and uh, I try to make it easy for her. But my sister-in-law, she said, I said, well, I have to be careful tonight and get home early because I'm in the pulpit tomorrow. She says, well, what are you talking about? And I said, smell. She says, what? So I'm talking about smell. And, but then I had to explain, I'm talking about the fragrance of Christ. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And we, we, we said, you know, you're more than welcome to come. And she said, well, she said, I'd have that little, little devil on the one side and the, the, the little angel on the other. I said, well, we all have that. I said, you're not unique in that aspect. But, uh, uh, but yeah, they, they, they're busy people. They have other things going on. But uh, we love them. It was a good time to be with them. So. But I want to speak, and yeah, I will be speaking on smell, uh, aroma, and odor. And hopefully by the time I'm done, it will make sense to you. Um, I don't know. The, I got some kind of like this in the early service, like, I'm trying to understand, but where's he going with this? So um, just hang on till the end, and I think it will make perfect sense. But I want to begin by reading uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16, and then also Ephesians 5, 2. And in 2 Corinthians it says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph of Christ, and through, his, through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. For to one we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? And I want you to remember that, the fragrance of Christ. That's important when I get to the end of my message. And I also want to look at uh, Ephesians 5.2. And that says, as we walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. And that's exactly what he did. It's the death on the cross. In researching uh, the message for today, um, I'm not going to read all of these passages, uh, but I'm going to just name a few of the books that they're in. Um, Exodus, 2 Kings, 2 Chronicles, Esther, uh, Song of Songs, Proverbs, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Amos, Daniel, Ecclesiastes, uh, Genesis, uh, Nehemiah. Those are just a few. Um, apparently, uh, one of our senses, which is smell, is important to God. Um, how many of you have had the COVID? Was your smell and your taste diminished by any sense of the imagination? Was heads yes. Uh, so we know how important taste and smell, they go together. Uh, if you can't smell your food, you don't really care what it tastes like, and if you can't taste it, you don't really care what it smells like. But I think smell was the one that uh, went away first. And so we know how important smell is, and apparently it's important to God because it's in the Bible. And like I said, I like to reference Pastor Don as much as I can. He always said, from kiver to kiver, it, if it's in this book, it's important, or God wouldn't have put it in there to begin with. So apparently one of our senses that he has blessed us with, along with sight, and D, we're continuing to pray for you in that aspect, but we also have touch, you know, hearing and, and smell. So uh, he blessed us with that for a reason. But it does, it plays an important part in the Bible. Uh, we can think of the burnt offerings in the Old Testament through to the uh, precious spices that were used to anoint our dear Lord and Savior as he was placed in the borrowed tomb. And they did that for a reason. They knew that uh, we didn't have the, the embalming practices like we do today, but they knew that the body would deteriorate to a certain point where there would be smell. And that's one of the smells in the Bible we'll be talking about. Uh, but when the women uh, went to the tomb early in the morning and they saw the stone had rolled away, I'm sure the smell, the fragrance of those spices were still evident along with the, uh, the fresh, uh, fragrant, dewy grass. Um, I'm sure there was other vegetation, maybe some flowers, um, but you can, you can imagine that smell. I, I said I love to go out early in the morning, walk through the dewy grass, that freshness that, that greets you. Uh, if you have a garden, you can smell the flowers. And it's a wonderful thing that, that God has blessed us with. And uh, they always say, stop and smell the roses. Take the time to appreciate uh, you know, what comes your way. But from Genesis to Revelation, um, I didn't count them. I'm just taking this on uh, 
the word of uh, a good gentleman in uh, searching my message today. There are over 200 references to smell and odor and fragrance in the Bible. So again, it's in there for a reason and we need to pay attention to it. And that's what I'm going to try to bring attention to uh, this morning. You know, you want to think of the old temple in Jerusalem. Um, we can think of the merchants, uh, the people gathered there. Uh, you know, they didn't have the, the hygiene that we have today. They didn't take a shower every day. They, they probably bathed whenever it was convenient in the river or wherever they could find. A, there might have been a pool somewhere, uh, maybe a communal bath. I don't know. Wasn't there? Don't know. But uh, we can just imagine living in that climate. Uh, they were desert dwellers for the most part. Uh, you know, they had to be uh, working in the fields and in their uh, marketplace. And, you know, they probably got pretty smelly and sweaty. And, you know, we do that too, but we're able to clean. But you can just imagine uh, the throngs of people gathered together, uh, how that would smell, the human smell. Um, we can think of the burning flesh of the sacrificed animals, uh, the incense that was also burned. Um, you know, I don't know what that would be like to burn the entire animal. I'm sure it's not like cooking a nice roast in the oven, but uh, when you have hide and bone and, and blood and all the internal organs, you know, it had to be uh, something overpowering. But we can also think of the smell, like I said before, of Jesus' resurrection, the embalming spices, and the early morning smells of the garden plants. Um, when our dear Lord and Savior was no longer held by uh, death and hell, but he was uh, raised from the dead as he said he would be after the third day and uh, walked this earth for a while and then ascended into heaven where he's waiting to come again. Uh, when he, uh, his father turns to him and say, okay, son, go, it's time to bring our people home. And we're looking for that and we're looking forward to that. And in a discussion uh, with uh, somebody this past week, they said, you know, Every generation has always said, you know, time is near. It can't be long now. And we're saying that even today. Um, doesn't take much to look at the news and see what's going on in the world to think, boy, it can't last much longer. You know, God, where are you? I know your timing's perfect, but something's got to be done or you're going to come back. But, you know, we just want it to happen quick. Uh, we're that fast food generation and we want it and we want it now. But his timing is perfect. His will is perfect. And... He'll do it when he knows it's time. Um, as long as we're here and we're sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, there's always the hope of somebody coming to know Christ as Savior. And in, until he feels that that's no longer viable, then he will come and bring us home. The sense of smell can take us places that uh, we remember from our youth. I said this morning my grandmother lived next door to me. That was a privilege. She was the only grandparent I knew. Um, I said her kitchen window was right next to our driveway that separated my house from hers. Boy, I could tell when she was baking a blackberry cobbler or something because it came right out that window. And uh, I have to say this about Pastor Don too. He, he'd walk out his back door and our kitchen faced his driveway and He'd yell in the window, something smells good, what are you cooking for supper tonight? <laughs> Best say, we got plenty, come on over. And uh, he always seemed to know when she made pizza. Cause, uh, and he said, if you ever make that and you don't tell me, you're going to have to pay for that dearly. So <laughs> we always made sure that he had pizza. And it was good. It, it is still good. And I'm, I know Beth's waiting until she can start making that again. So. But she's got a good crustless pizza recipe that, yeah, it's thumbs up. So. But it transports us to our childhood or maybe a, a place that we visited. Um, I use, again, Pastor Don as an example. Uh, Sandy and Carrie were um, in the early service. And I don't know who all went with him to Israel, but he always talked about the souk and the merchants and the, the hanging meat with the flies and, and the vegetables and the fruit. And uh, again, the, the sweaty human smell Everything's congregated, uh, but I'm sure that, that would take them back to a place in time like that. And then I used Beth and Josh and I as a, an example. We flew to Germany on Air India, and you can imagine the, not the American Indian, but the India, India smell of curry and spices, um, pretty fragrant. Um, when you eat that continually, that permeates your body. And uh, 
said the, the flight going over was pretty good, but the, the flight coming home was pretty rough. They, I think they ate more than the f people going over, but uh, <laughs> Beth said, I don't think I'll ever eat curry. So it's pretty strong, pretty potent. But that's what, you know, um, or smells and fragrance and, and just our sense of smell will transport us to places and help us remember things, good and bad, but mostly good. And just to mention a few, and there's quite a few, but I'm going to mention them anyway. Um, we like to camp. First thing you smell in the morning when you wake up is bacon. I think everybody that camps fries bacon over the fire. That's a wonderful smell. It's, it's good at home, but it's better when it's outside. Uh, I don't really care for bacon, but I like to eat it when we're camping. Um, and then when you have campfires, obviously, uh, we have them at home, but when you're camping, that's another thing that's just constant. That burning wood, uh, it's a wonderful smell. We used to have a wood burner in home, and again, you know, it's fragrant. It's 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 a powerful smell, but it's it, it's a good smell. Uh, fresh coffee. Beth doesn't like coffee. I'm using her as an example because she's my wife. I can do that. So <laughs> she she loves to open a can of coffee when it's fresh, and that first whiff you get of that fresh cup of coffee, uh, even when it's brewing, it's it's. I love coffee, so uh, I'll probably go broke hitting all the coffee spots in Lima, but uh, I guess. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, Josh and I will go down together because he likes coffee too. Uh, we love fresh cut grass and new mown hay. There's nothing better in the first time of spring when you cut that grass for the first time. Afterwards it gets old, you don't really think about it, but that first time, boy. It, you know, it's, I mean, yeah, it's like, oh, I've got to cut the grass again. But the first time, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, you, just, you just can't get enough of it. And like I say, we, we talked about the garden early. We sang about the garden. Um, we have roses and lilacs and lavender, and we have uh, honeysuckle, and we have, uh, we have butterfly bushes. I don't know what the actual fragrance is, but boy, the butterflies know what it is, and it's great. Uh, but those are things that, that God blesses us with, and uh, we need to take advantage of that. But like I said, you know, stop and smell the roses. Um, but uh, they have a scent for a reason, not just for the insects, but for us as well to enjoy. And I love walking through the woods this time of year. Uh, the leaves are falling, they get dry, and they break up, and they kind of decay a little bit. And you get that dusty, earthy smell. There's nothing better than walking through the woods in the fall. Uh, we don't get to do it a lot uh, because my son-in-law and grandson like to hunt, so we can't scare the deer, but we take advantage of it when we can. But that's a wonderful thing. Like burning, burning leaves, we can't do that anymore, but that's a smell that takes me back to my childhood. Uh, everybody would rake them to the street and set them on fire and fill the smoke, you know, the yard and the streets full of smoke, and that's a wonderful smell. Probably not good for you, probably carcinogenic, whatever, but, uh, uh, and then speaking of that, um, my dad had an old outboard motor that had old leaded gas in it. And it's different than the gas you smell today. And leaded gas has a wonderful smell. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's just one of those intoxicating things. Uh, I never OD'd on it, don't get me wrong there, but I, I just love to smell, because I used to mow the yard and we still had leaded gas. But it's one of those things that takes you back to your childhood. And then we've, you know, we have young ones and we've got some new ones here in the church. Uh, they're not here today, but they will be soon. Uh, but we have the, the new babies that come along and we smell uh, the baby powder and the lotion and the sweet baby breath. But I said along with that, you have to take the bad with the good and you have the, the, the full diapers and the spit up. But you love them anyway, because that's part of it, you know. Uh, but those are smells that we remember. Uh, we've had puppies in the past, uh, puppy breath. And then old dog breath, they're completely different. But again, they're smells. Um, something that we remember that transport us to different places. And we were driving down the road the other day and Beth says, oh, that farmer's plowing the field, can't you smell that fresh earth? And I said, yeah, I said, it's the same thing in the, in the spring when you take that first shovel full of dirt to plant a garden and do flowers. Uh, it's fresh, it's new, uh, it's inviting. And then I love coming home, opening the back door. Again, I'm picking on Beth. Uh, when she has supper cooking, or I can tell when she has brownies or chocolate chip cookies and maybe a chocolate cake, or maybe she you know, has spaghetti or lasagna or something, but you can to tell the difference. But it's, it's inviting, uh, it's welcoming. 
and uh, may not be hungry, but when I walk in the back door, I usually become that way real fast. And then with the holidays fast approaching, we think of the, uh, the holiday smells. Uh, we'll be decorating the church here shortly for Christmas. We think of the pines and the evergreens and, the, and uh, you know, the Christmas spices, the sugar cookies and the, and the cinnamon and all the spices associated with that, plus Thanksgiving when we're doing our cooking. But those are powerful smells. Like I said, we take the good with the bad, especially with the babies, but we love them. Uh, we, we expect that. We know that's coming. When I was growing up, uh, we never ate onions at home, and I realized that my dad grew up around Alger and worked in the onion fields from time to time. And he said, if you've ever stuck your hand in a rotten onion, you will never eat another one the rest of your life. And he never did. But then I married Beth, and now we have onions and garlic. So. Uh, so I didn't know what I was missing, and I love them both. Um, I used to eat raw onions, but then I realized I tasted them three days later, so I don't like that. But I do love cooked onions, so. But, you know, we have to take the good with the bad. And, you know, there's nothing worse when you forget to take the garbage out and you realize that you had chicken skin or some bad eggs or some, you know, vegetables that had turned bad. But again, these are the bad smells that, you know, we take as part of our life. And then you drive down the road and uh, some poor animal has been hit and died alongside the road. And, and whether you see them or not, you know they're there. And you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then our old farmhouse, when we first got together, Beth and I, we had a mouse problem. You would poison them and they would die in the most inappropriate places. And thank goodness they were little because they didn't smell very long, but they smelled bad enough for long enough. Uh, but that's the smell that I'm going to talk about here real quick, and that's the smell of death. We have to remember the fragrance of Christ, uh, but we have to know that the fragrance of Christ covers the smell of death. And I know I was on a rescue squad for a while, and I never had uh, the misfortune of going to uh, receive a deceased person, but I know of some first responders that did, and uh, said they had to get out the good old Vicks Vapor Rub to put on their nostrils to help them do their job because of the smell. And uh, that's what Mary and Martha were talking about when Jesus rolled the, the stone away. She said, you know, dear Lord, he's been dead for four days. There will be a smell. But Jesus brought him back to life. There was no smell. There was no mention of that in the Bible, and that's important. But the, again, that's the smell of death. And I'm a history buff, especially World War II. Uh, Vietnam was my generational war, if you want to call it that. I was old enough. I could have gone. Um, I didn't have to. I had a draft no or number and didn't have a draft notice. My brother did, but fortunately he was, had a football injury that kept him out of the draft. Um, I'm sure he would have gone, but he didn't have to. Um, but in listening and to veterans talk about their experiences in war, um, there's several they talk about, that's the smell of gunpowder. Um, after the invention of napalm, they talked about napalm. They talked about, uh, especially in the Pacific and Vietnam, the, the rotten jungle smell. And especially in World War II, uh, the Marines on the beaches as they swept through the Pacific, they talked about, because the, the Japanese were just uh, suicidal to a point, there were so many that were killed. Uh, they said they couldn't dispose of the bodies, and they said once you smell mass dead bodies, you'll never forget that. And that they can't. It's one of those things that's just etched in their memory that they try to forget. But again, uh, that's what I'm talking about today is the smell of death. And in John 11:38 and 44, I've already mentioned that, but I want to read it anyway. And it says, then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And Martha, the sister of Lazarus, who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that it would, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And then they took the stone away from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his hands and his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for you have heard me. And I know that you are always hearing me because... The people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had cried, he said these things, Lazarus, come forth. 
and he came out bound head and foot with grave clothes and his face was clothes, uh, wrapped with a cloth and Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Even back then they were, they were worried about that smell of death. They knew what it was. Uh, but Jesus wasn't afraid. Uh, he knew before he even got there that Lazarus had died. But he used that to bring glory to himself, to let people know that he was the son of God and that he was powerful because uh, his father in heaven had blessed him and sent him to this earth to do miraculous things and that's one of the miracles that he did. We've always said that if he would have just said, you know, come forth, then anybody within earshot that had perished would have come out of the grave. But he called Lazarus by name because he knew he just wanted that one man to come forth. But again, they were well aware of death and the smell of death. And then in Ephesians 5, 1 through 5. And this is one I didn't get to read this morning because I don't know what my problem was, but I wrote down the wrong number. But I got it right this time, so I'm going to read it. It says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. There's that word again, a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fenting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolishness, talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man, no all idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. But we look back that Christ himself was offered as that sweet-smelling aroma. And those of us that have accepted Christ, we know that we've been washed in the blood. You know blood stains. But it's interesting that they use that analogy. Um, we're washed white. We're washed clean by the blood of Christ. Uh, blood is hard to get out, but when the, the blood of Christ covers you, uh, all uncleanness is gone. And that's important we need to know. And I want to reference, uh, going back to the music we heard last night, an old Leonard Skinner song. I'm sure some of you know who Leonard Skinner is, but there's a song that they sing that has nothing to do with salvation. It's a completely different subject, but it fits here today. It says, ooh, that smell. Don't you smell that smell? The smell of death surrounds you. And unless you're covered by the blood of Christ, that's exactly what reaches the nostrils of our God and Father in heaven. He smells death if he looks at an unsaved person. It's only when the shed blood of Christ covers that person that he smells the fragrance of Christ. And that's what we're to be uh, as believers of Christ, uh, knowing that we're saved, knowing that we live in a lost and dying world, and knowing that we have to share what we know, that others too might come to know him as their Lord and Savior. And my last reference in Scripture is Ephesians 2, 1 through 13. And this is you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath. And just as the others, but God, who was rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were with our Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers, from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. 
And that's exactly what people that don't know Jesus Christ are. They're without God. They're without hope in this world that wants them to believe on other things other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So become the fragrance of Christ. Accept him as your Lord and Savior if you haven't already. And if anybody's listening to this video, that's our prayer here at the Waynesville Baptist Church, that you do exactly that, that you're moved in your spirit, that you say yes to Jesus and accept him as Lord and Savior, that you're covered by the blood of Christ and that uh, our God and Father in heaven no longer smells the death, the death of, you know, surrounds you. So that's our prayer, uh, that you know Jesus Christ and that you smell like the blood of Christ. And there's nothing more pleasing to our God and Father in heaven. Would you bow in prayer? Father God, we thank you for this day and the chance to be together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, we come to this building to be the church uh, that you've called us together. Father, we thank you for holding us together as we go forward in our pastoral search. Um, Father, we know that your will is perfect and uh, things will happen in your time. And we just give you thanks and praise for all things in Christ's name and for his sake we do pray. Amen. Now, before anything else happens, I know we've got some other things going on here. Uh, I do want to mention, did I mention anything about the pulpit committee this morning, before? No. Okay. We met last week and we had three fantastic interviews. I think any three of these people would be uh, a, a good fit for our church. Uh, we are going forward. We're going to meet Monday night to uh, put our collective thoughts together. And uh, I think our next round, we're going to do one more round of questions. And uh, Linda come up with a great idea, and I think I can share with this, this with you. I don't think it's going against the committee policy. But uh, she had a good idea to ask each candidate to prepare an eight to ten minute a message on, uh, I think we're going to pick the same subject. We don't know what that's going to be. We'll figure that out Monday night. So we can actually hear them present a message on the same subject to see how they handle that. And I think that's a great idea. So once we do that, then we'll move on and um, invite that person to an off-site location to where the pulpit committee can go to hear that person preach. And then if we feel that they're a good fit, we'll bring them here, like I've said before, to present to you on a Sunday morning to have them be in the pulpit. And then uh, after that, we'll have a, a collective meeting uh, to say yay or nay. But that's how the process goes. Now, I want to tell you, I think we're ahead of the curve. I know we're coming up fast on Pastor Don's um, one year passing anniversary. When we met with Jane after, a, I think, a, an appropriate time of mourning as a church, uh, we put together a fantastic committee, and I wish you could see these people in action. Uh, I don't think we've ever met for less than two hours. I don't think we have, and it's been good. It's been nonstop. Um, but, you know, we have some great people. They're all versed in what they were chosen for. John and his music, and, and Joe and his a deacon and, and as a you know preaching experience uh, Linda in her um, as Sunday school and as her uh, teaching experience thank goodness she's retired because she's been a workhorse um, and then Sharon as a trustee and a, a early AM um, attendee and, and Autumn as our youth representative they're all outspoken uh, they're all sharing they're all interjecting they're all asking questions all pertinent to our worship experience in this church. So um, continue to pray for us. Uh, we're not dragging our feet. Jane told us when we first met with her, it might take you a year, a year and a half. But I think we're getting close. I mean, I really do. And uh, it's not even been a year since Pastor Don left us. And it's, I don't know when we first met, but six months maybe, even that. So, uh, yeah. You may think we're moving at a snail's pace, but we're not. You know, we're getting things done. And uh, we're excited. We've seen some good things and heard some good things. So we're looking forward to the next step. So with all that being said and done, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Joe to come up here. I'll give you the yeah. microphone. I'll grab the mic and bring it down. Yeah, as Tom was saying, just before I say that on the pulpit committee, we've taken that on. I know we've all discussed it and felt the burden that we have with that. 
Um, and we did not want to rush anything at all in that process. Every one of us wanted to make sure that, like Tom said, we did give the, the time for the church to mourn because, you know, 35 years was a long time and we all uh, still feel the hurt at times. Um, but we didn't want to rush to anything. We wanted to make sure that we, we gave the amount of time and that we've put the time in ourselves with, with praying and studying and overlooking the, the resumes and overlooking and searching. And as, as Tom spoke, Linda did a very outstanding job for us of, of bringing things together. So that was great. But now I, I get the privilege and blessing here th this morning um, as part of the church. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I asked in our morning service, uh, a vote of confidence and prayer if us as a church would like to license Tom. Well, this morning, that's what we're coming to do. We're coming to present that. We had an outstanding, unanimous vote that that was what everything wanted. Um, and I think it's a blessing. Um, Tom does so much already for us. And I know, I don't know if anyone else gets it, but every, every Friday I get a message from him in text message. John's raising his hand. Um, it's uplifting every week, just something, you know, that is presented to us and encourage us and bringing us into everything. And, you know, him stepping behind the pulpit and filling in, he tells you all the time, I'm, I'm not a pastor. This isn't, this isn't my comfort zone. But he stepped out of that comfort zone for us as a church. And I know personally I'm thankful because that's one less weekend that I have to prepare food because it, it, it is a great deal to have to stand up here and present something and bring it forth and they commonly tell you that preaching a 30-minute service is like equivalent to working eight hours. And we both have understood now why Pastor Don would always say, I'm going to go home and take a nap. I'm wore out. Because we both, some Sundays, we both, we look at each other and we're like, we made it. It's, it's, it's two good services. We're done. I'm going to go take a nap. But um, Beth, will you come up here and stand with Tom, please? I know... Um, yeah, we'll have the family come up stand too. I just definitely, yeah, we'll have them, that's fine. I just definitely wanted her to stand next to you. Sure, if you want to come up, Shirley and Mother, everything. I'm, I'm more than happy to have the rest of the family. I definitely wanted Beth next to you because it, as us married men know, our wife, we may be the, the head, but they are the neck that makes sure we're turning in the right directions. They keep us guided. They keep us on, on the right path. So I wanted her to be up here and the family as well because they're behind him and encouraging him. Um, but it is a blessing and a privilege. I'm going to, before I pray, I'm going to present you with this, Tom. It is the certificate of license that is from the Waynesville Baptist Church. This is being presented from the church. And like I said, I'm just one of the deacons that are, are able to present that. Thank you for allowing me to be able to be up here and present this. But that is your certificate of license. I greatly appreciate everything you do for us. Um, and at this time, any and everyone that is willing, if you come on forward, please, um, up here, we're going to lay hands on Tom and pray over him. So I ask any and everyone that's willing, if you don't want to come up, you want to stand in your seats and just reach your hand forward, that's fine. But uh, yes, anybody that's willing and want to come up, you ladies, you know, you can put your hand around Beth because she's been very supportive in this as well. And she'll continue to support him in, in all of this. Cool. Here, I can take that paper back if need be. I can take that paper back. All right, this is outstanding. Yes, I love the youth up here as well because this is you guys are part of this. That's outstanding. All right, if you all bow your heads. Lord, we thank you for Tom. We thank you for the godly man that you've created here. Lord, we just pray that you continue to guide him, that you strengthen him. Lord, I know he says he stepped out of it, but he has an outstanding way of presenting as a teacher, Lord. And I pray that you continue to bless that. You continue to bless him. And Lord, continue to let him be a blessing to this community and one of your men that can go out here into the world and spread the love of Christ and the gospel to a world that needs it. And Lord, I just pray especially an anointing upon him. I ask all these things in your name, Lord. Amen. Yes. A round of applause. Congratulations, Tom. Yes. All right. I'll turn the service back over to you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that's enough for one day. Uh, I don't think my heart can take anymore, so. <laughs> I haven't even taken my heart medication this morning, so, uh, yeah. 
it was too early to take it this morning, so I'll take it when I get home. Beth, you need to remind me of that. There's <laughs> always, always a good woman behind the, the man. So, um, yeah, we're just, uh, as Maxine comes and, and plays, uh, we'll ask Troy to come forward. And, uh, you know, as we do the, the benediction and the silent meditation, um, go in God's grace, um, share the good news of Jesus Christ, become the fragrance of Christ that he wants you to be. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, you know, nobody knows about Christ on their own. They have to hear from somebody else. You have to be that good example. Uh, you have to let them know what Christ has done in your life and what he can do for them. Um, you have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to, you have to share the good news of Christ. So that's my prayer. That's my wish um, for this church and for all of you. So um, I'm going to sign the meditation and cry. Come on up, Troy.